Shalom, everyone. I'm very excited to be here with you this evening, uh, beginning a brand new series in Halakha that I called Kosher Curiosities. Kashrut, kosher, is a very large part of our life, our everyday living as a Jewish person. And there are so many questions that come up with regards to kashrut and kosher that I get asked all the time. And I felt it would be appropriate to give a class weekly, Bezrat Hashem, a short class online, 30 minutes, uh, to have everybody here, you know, learn a little bit about why we do certain things and also remove certain misconceptions about kashrut that, uh, that many are, are unaware of. And <clears throat> I figured that through this medium, we can attract and uh, attach ourselves to as many people as possible. And Bezrat Hashem, uh, we will learn lots going on from this point forward. I called it kosher curiosities because that's what it is. Uh, much of kashrut is a curiosity. Many times we do things that we don't even know why we're doing it. And <clears throat> a lot of people, again, have questions that they, they, that they ask and they, they do things by rote. And I think it's important to know the reasons behind certain things that we do and to learn, to learn as well. Uh, for that reason, I'm not just going to uh, speak ad hoc. I'm actually going to uh, read and learn from a sefer, from a book, uh, especially for our uh, Israeli or Hebrew-speaking audiences that they can hear the words in Ivrit as well. I'm going to focus on the sefer called Penine Halacha, which I am very fond and have taken a liking to. Um, Rabbi Eliezer Melamed is one of the uh, great poskim, one of the great halachic decisors of the generation. His uh, set Penine Halacha is the uh, most sold Hebrew Jewish set or Torah set in the world. And he has, uh, again, a, he's a tremendous Tamil Chacham. And the information that he actually writes in his book often is, is novel and very eye-opening. Um, <clears throat> so Bezat Hashem, I, ant- I anticipate this, uh, this class to take some time. There is no rush. Uh, we'll go through it in the winter time, uh, throughout the winter, and maybe even continue it as we get into the spring and the summer. And again, short 30 minutes, Bezrat Hashem, to uh, gain more knowledge on this idea of Kashrut. Uh, tonight, I actually would like to begin with the first topic, which I called tonight's class, Should I Be a Vegetarian? Vegetarianism or veganism, um, or they're, they're not exactly the same, but they're very close, it has kind of taken the world by storm. You know, you can see now vegan restaurants, um, vegan uh, buffets, you go to uh, you go to certain places and they have a vegan only section. Um, this is actually something that we're going to see was a thing once upon a time, and for many of us who are used to eating uh, meat and chicken um, throughout throughout the days of our week, especially on Shabbat and Yom Tov, uh, this actually has some application uh, because as we're going to see, once upon a time this was not this was not the case. So without further ado, we're going to begin. Tonight, Shi'ur, should I be a vegetarian? And we're going to read from the Sefer of Penine Halakha. Uh, for those that are online on the internet, um, you can actually access the Penine Halakha series for free online in Hebrew. And um, there are certain volumes of his that you can, uh, you can find in English as well, translated in even Spanish and Russian. Uh, however, this one, I believe, this section on Kashrut is only, uh, until now, only written in, in Hebrew. It has not been translated yet. Um, so let's begin. And Bezat Hashem, uh, this will be, I think, part one of the vegetarian conversation that we're going to have. So let's look what he says over here. We're in his uh, Sefer called uh, Kashrut Aleph, Hatzomech Vachai, chapter Yudalit, called Achilat Basar, which is the eating of meat. And part one of this chapter, he calls Heter Achilat Basar the permissiveness to eat meat. And he begins as follows. Mitechila, in the beginning, hakavana haita shemachalo shel adam yeh minat So he begins by saying that, that right at the start of creation, that God's intent was for man only to eat from the tzomeach. Tzomeach is our, our, our leaves, our greenery, that is tzomeach, that sprouts from the ground. That's all we were allowed to eat. Shnei emar. He quotes a pasuk in Parashat Bereshit, at the opening of the seven days of creation, by Yomer Elohim, God said, Hine natati lachem et kol esev zorea zera, that here, behold, I have given to you all the greenery that, that is planted, 
asher apene kol ha'aretz that is throughout on the face of the earth, ve'et kol ha'etz asher bo peri etz and all trees that have fruit, zore azara lachem yeh leochla. That is for you to eat. So this pasuk clearly teaches us that at the start, when God created the world, what we were supposed to eat was only greens, was only vegetables, was only things that grew from the ground or from or came from trees. Aval baale chayim, animals, living things. Neesru al haadam baachila. These were prohibited to be eaten uh, by us. This is quoting a Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin. Bekatvu mefarshim. And the Mefarshim, the commentators explained, Shegam hachayot histapku az beminet zomeach velo tarfu zo etzu. In the way back when, when Hashem created the animals, even the animals only were allowed to eat from the tzomeach, from that was which grows from the ground, and they did not attack or eat um, one another. That was not something that was that they did. Uh, as much as we see today in African safaris, and we see lions attacking and and cheetahs attacking and all these things and eagles coming and 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 uh, crouching on their prey. This was something that did not happen at the start of creation. So what happened? Ulam he explains. Hachataim gavru, sins increased. Vehaolam kulo hit kalkel, and the world began to self-destruct. Zehitchil bechet o shel adam harishon. This began with the sin of Adam. Shebeito goresh migan eden venigzera mita alav veazaro where he was kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and now, because of that sin, from eating from the tree, death had been uh, decreed on the world. Even the earth itself fell from its high state. And now the earth, which was only supposed to be given off, uh, giving off amazing, good, luscious fruits and vegetables, now is beginning to give off thorns and thistles. But the punishment did not lead to any type of Musar lessons or something for us. What happened? Cain, Ratzach et Hevel Achiv. Cain, which was Cain, which was Adam's son, killed his brother Hevel. Bedoroshel Enosh, in the generation of Enosh, Nechdoshel Adam Arishon, the grandson of Adam, Hechelu Lachto Babodazara, they started worshipping idols and committing idolatry. Beacharkach Gabru Achataim Bagezel. Ni'uf v'retzach. And everybody else just sunk into sins of theft and adultery and murder. Be'makvil lechata'em she b'nei ha'adam. In parallel to these sins of mankind. Gam tiv'an shel ha'chayot hafach le'etom ve'achzari yoter. Even the nature of the animals began, uh, began to be more opaque and more cruel. Ve'hen ha'chelu litrof zu etzu. And they began to eat one another and attack one another. At this point, Hashem decided that all living things need to be uh, need to be wiped out. Emar, as the pasuk says, This is the beginning of Parashat Noah, where the land itself began to destroy or destroy itself, and the land was filled with robbery. God looked at the land and he saw what was going on and he couldn't believe it. Because all flesh were uh, have sunk and be destroyed uh, to the lowest levels. By Elohim Noach, this is when Hashem commanded Noach and said, "Ket kol basar ba lefanai ki malea haaretz Hamas mipenehem." The end of flesh and blood has come because of the Hamas, because of the cruelty and the robbery and the horrible things that the world has. Turned into. And now I am going to destroy the world. And then he commands Noach to build his ark. And Noach and his sons were the only ones to sur- to survive this. He explains. Only Noach and his sons and anybody that was in the teva in the ark were saved from this flood. Coming out of the ark after the flood, they were tasked to rebuild the world. Through the seven laws of Noah, which is the fundamental or the foundation of all human morality. And only after this system of proper ethics between man and his friend can be built properly. 
יוכל האדם להמשיך להתעלות ביחסיו המוסרים כלפי בעלי חיים. Only then can man continue that, that once upon a time relationship that they had with animals or other living creatures. לשם כך, because of this, היה צורך לקבוע גבול ברור בין האדם שנברא בצלם אלוהים לבין בעלי החיים. There needed to be a distinct separation, a boundary, a border between man who was created in God's image with animals or living creatures which were not created in God's image. Why is it so? כדי להדגיש את ייעודו ואחריותו של האדם, in order to express the purpose and responsibility of man, שרק עליו מוטלת המשימה לתקן את העולם ורוממו, because it's only on him, only on mankind, that has a task to repair and rectify the world and bring it up to its once elevated state. הביטוי המובהק לכך, שלאחר המבור הוטל לבני אדם לאכול בשר בעלי חיים. What came as a result, as a consequence, is that man was now allowed to consume flesh, animals, toch azara hamura, but with that, through a very, very strict warning, shelo lirtsoach adam shenivra betzelem Elohim, that man is not allowed to murder another man. So you could kill an animal in order to eat it, but you cannot kill another person. Shnei emar, as the Pasuk says, again, <coughs> in Parshad Noach, vayvarech Elohim et Noach ve'et banav, that God blessed Noach and his sons. And he said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And your fear will be upon all the birds of the earth. Anyone that's, that crawls throughout the land. And all the fish of the sea. Again, any remes, any creeping uh, crawler. Uh, you can eat. Just like the vegetation, I give you all. The only thing that you have to take care of is not to kill or draw the blood of a fellow human being because this human being is created in the image of Hashem. Tzarich Leosif, he writes that I must add the following point. That as a result of the sins of Adam and all the generations uh, that, uh, that preceded the flood, all na- uh, nature and the way nature was supposed to be, the stages of nature collapsed. And the truth be told, he writes, Someach, which is vegetation, things that grow from the ground, was not enough to keep man sustained. Kilomar, hanefila musarit hovila leetzirat masav ekologi chadash, that the ethical downfall um, that took place uh, before the, 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 the flood created a new ecological system. Shebo bene adam muchachim lechol basar, to the point where man needs to eat meat. Velamrot she'enze ideali, now even though this is not ideal, the necessity can't justify. Because Noah was solely responsible for sustaining the animals during the flood and keeping them alive, so as a uh, reward, let's call it, Noah would be allowed to eat and take part uh, from, from, the, from the eating of the meat in order that he can survive. In our current state, if we all hold back from eating meat, not necessarily is this going to be good for the animal world. If we do not continue to raise animals properly in order that we can eat them, their numbers, the numbers of the species, will diminish very rapidly. The reason why we have so many cows and sheep and so on and so forth, all these animals that we eat, is because humans are taking care of them. They're breeding these animals and they're, they're multiplying at very, very rapid paces. 
ואילו היו משחררים את כל הבהמות והתרנגולות לחופשי, However, if human beings would just say, okay, we're no longer eating meat, we're not going to take care of the animals, we're going to let the cows run wild, and the chickens run wild, and the sheep run wild, and all the other types of food run wild, what's going to end up happening? You're going to see all the, uh, the beasts of the land um, will, will come and devour these animals, and we're not going to have many of them, that number will diminish uh, tremendously. So... This is the end of part one, where so we clearly explain that yes, once upon a time, that's what it was. We were supposed to be vegetarian, but as a result of the sins, we needed to separate ourselves from the Bale Chaim, from the living creatures, to make that get there. And not only that, physically, we, we require the, uh, the meat to sustain us, and as well as some sort of, uh, uh, you know, sachar, reward for Noah keeping the animals alive. So therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu allowed us to eat the meat. Um, after after the flood, which was not the case before the flood. In part two of the section, he asks, Should vegetarianism or veganism be something that we should preach? Is this something that we should train and educate our family or something that we should do in uh, in our homes? Katav Maran HaRav Kuk, he quotes the the famous uh, tzaddik, Rav Kuk, She'omnam lefi ha'ida'al ha'shalem, ha'ya ra'uy la'adam shelo le'echol basar ba'alei ha'yim. Really, like we said, according to the first ideology that we, ha- we we mentioned in the beginning, man should not be eating meat. However, based on where our current status and where we are right now, one should not encourage others to stop eating meat. Because after the flood, like we said, now that we can see how low a person is able to fall and deteriorate to such very, very uh, basement levels, the Torah wanted to direct mankind to his or her ultimate purpose, and that ultimate purpose is to repair and rectify the relationships that man has with his fellow man. For it is very clear, <clears throat> there is a difference between the uh, the level of uh, closeness to Hashem of, of man versus that of Balechaim of living creatures. Because man was created in the image of God, and he has wisdom and he has a mind and he has knowledge and he has feelings. And therefore, if God forbid something happens or a sin takes place, something he does wrong, he feels it immediately. And when man acts with another one uh, with defense and with love, the fact that I am friendly, the fact that I say hi and smile and act with chesed and kindness um, to my fellow, this actually causes the geula to come. It helps bring Mashiach. Therefore, in order to express this main idea of the mitzvah, that you should love your friend like yourself, and again, also the mitzvah that what is what is hated to your fellow, don't do it to your friend. The Torah is telling us you can push this idea aside, the idea of, of refraining from eating meat, and focus on your connection between man and his friend. Says the Rav Kuk, a person is allowed to shecht, slaughter animals in order to eat it. Like the rabbi said in the Gemara Masechet Kiddushin, You should know that all living creatures were created solely for the purpose of serving man. And based on where we are today in our levels in connection of Hashem, that also means that we can partake in eating from uh, these animals. More than this, if what would happen have we just put our entire efforts not in the love and care and kindness for our fellow man, but if we directed that only towards animals and ignored our fellow man, 
something bad would happen. You would be destroying uh, any type of relationship between your, your fellow man because all you care about are, are living creatures. All these people where their, their ethics are not as developed would be saying, Since we don't care anyways from killing... Um, um, uh, um, uh, from killing uh, living creatures and eating them. So we'll just go and kill a regular man as well. Who cares? Let's just do whatever we want. And who knows, maybe even eat from the flesh of human beings. And there are people in this world, unfortunately, that have such low ethics that don't care about anything. Um, and they care only about animals or, or whatnot, or maybe even not that, that literally they will do anything they want to uh, human beings, as we see clearly in in the world, certain rishaim, certain wicked people that will do will stop at nothing to make the lives of humans miserable, or uh, and even to the point of killing them and butchering them. There are even other types of wicked men and women. They will turn all of their good features, all of their good midot, only towards animals. <coughs> Because every wicked person has some sort of spark um, of goodness. If they're taking that little goodness that they have only towards animals, what are they going to end up doing? They don't have any good left because the only good that they have is towards the animals. So it will cause them now to go steal from people, or to deceive others, or even like we said, murder. A person should not encourage other people not to eat meat. If Shalomar, we can say, Since as long as there are, are people in the world that have a ta'ava, that have a desire to eat meat, it's just a sign that we haven't reached the level that we're supposed to reach. Which what he's implying now is that, that there will be a time where if the Jews do, or the world gets to the point where they're supposed to, where the connection, the relationships between one another is so high, they won't have any more ta'avot, desires to eat meat. And then we know that at that point we can revert back to the old system where um, we can focus only on uh, on eating uh, the fruits and uh, the trees, the vegetation. That's what he addresses now. In the future, what's going to happen? The whole world will rise to much higher levels. The rabbis in Kabbalah would say, that all living creatures are going to reach the level like human beings to the point that they're going to be able to speak. And even <clears throat> what you will see, the ethical code amongst men, mankind, and humans will change. Of course, he quotes now the famous Sukim, the famous verses in the book of Yeshayahu, where he describes what is going to happen in the end of days, in the times of Mashiach, that we read on the eighth day of Pesach. The Gar Ze'evim Keves. The wolf is going to live with the lamb. And the leopard with the kid, Yirbat, will lie. You have the lion cub and the cab and the fatling together. And a small child leading lions. And the cow and the bear will graze together. And the lion is going to start eating uh, grain. Uh, all these things which are not normal today is going to happen in the days of Mashiach. Uh, the, uh, the child, the baby, will look through the hole of the snake. And he's going to stretch his hand into the eyeball of the, of the adder, and nothing will happen to him. You will, there will be no destruction and no evil throughout my holy mountain. Because everyone will be filled, all animals and human beings will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem. Just like the water um, covers. Uh, the, the oceans. So we see from here, we see that it's not appropriate to kill any type of creatures. Um, and it's not, and there should be no ta'ava to actually eat from the basar. That's going to happen in the future. 
until now, until that point where we do have these desires to eat from uh, from the meat, then we can continue eating from the meat and shechting and shechting them. The Chidivrei Navi and he quotes pasuk in Oshea vecharati lahem berit bayom ahun chayat asadev imofa shemaim beremes adama. I will make a covenant on that day. Vekeshet vechel michamash bo min aretz. There will be no more sword. There will be no more war. Uh, in the end of days, as everyone will live in peace. And that concludes the second part of, uh, of this chapter. We're going to do one more part. I'm, going, I'm trying to keep it around the half an hour shiur uh, per class. And this third part in this chapter is called Mitzvat Achilat Basar B'Shabbatot U'Seudot Mitzvah. And he writes, Mitzvah Lechol Basar B'Shabbatot Yamin Tomim. He says it's a mitzvah to eat meat on Shabbat and Yom Tov. Sheken mitzvah mina Torah leit'aneg b'Shabbat velismoch b'Yom Tov. The Torah actually mandates us to be, um, I guess, uh, to enjoy Shabbat and Yom Tov. Verov hanashim mit'anegim usmechim b'achilat basar. And many people, they attain this happiness and this joy through the eating of meat. Bizman shebet ha-midash kayam, af ha'ita mitzvah lechol mi besar korbanot. In the days of the bet ha-midash, this mitzvah was uh, was performed through the, the korbanot that you sacrifice, korban chagiga, before each holiday you would come and you would partake from uh, that meat. He says, you know, we have a, there's a question here that we need to address. How is it possible that the eating of meat, which we just spent the last 20 minutes talking about how this was something that was prohibited at the start of creation. How could that have turned to a mitzvah? The simple answer is, since, again, our ethical conduct has changed over the millennium, there is no ethical problem of eating meat nowadays. And now that we have a, a commandment to be sameah, to be happy, on Shabbat and Yom Tov, and eating meat brings that happiness, Therefore, we have a mitzvah to eat it on Shabbat and Yom Tov. Hosifu chachmea kabbalah uberu. The the rabbi, the kabbalistic rabbis, uh, added and explained. Shebematzavenu anochachi yeshno erech barichilat basar. Given our our current circumstances, we have a there's a value in eating meat. Mipenes shebikvot hachet haolam kulo yaram madregato. Because of our sins or the original sin from Adam Arishon, the world descended from its maala from its high level. Now they get a little bit, he gets a little bit deep here. He says there are four um, you know types of um, elements in uh, not in the creation, but there's domem. Domem are the stationary objects such as a rock, tzomeach, tzomeach are uh, like we said, greenery and things that grow from the ground. Chai, chai is one step higher, which is the living creatures that are alive. And the highest creature is the medaber, which is the human being that is able to talk. And all of them have fallen from their original state to uh, to lower levels as a result of that sin of Adam Harishon. So now, look how he explains. Beautiful Chidush, he says. V'kasher Yisrael ochlim besaram shel ba'ale chayim, apik lale helchot kashrut. When the Jewish people eat from the meat of animals that, uh, w- according to the laws of kashrut, mitoch kavana leitchazek b'avodat Hashem, with the intent to connect ourselves to Hashem, hara shebabasar nifrad me'atov. Anything that was evil, that was ra in the meat, gets separated. Ve'yosek kipsolet, and gets like thrown away. Ve'atov shebo, and all the good that remains in the meat, mitalev and ispag begufam now gets absorbed and swallowed in our bodies, the goodness of the meat, the, the, the good sparks that are found in that basad, allows us to perform our holy service to Hashem. And that is the way, in fact, it works for all types of things. The vegetation, what grows, is able to draw out its sustenance from the domem, from the stationary, and that elevates the domem, the stationary, to the level of the tzomeach. And when the animal eats from the vegetation, that elevates the tzomeach, the vegetation, to the level of chai, of living creatures. And when people eat from the animals, and thereby clinging to God, that now that meat 
elevates itself to the level of of medaber uh, of a man of a mankind. And through that ladder, the food actually allows us to go one high, one step at a time higher. And you should know most specifically when is it that we have this concept of raising the meat to the level of the medaber to the level of mankind, specifically on the seudot of Shabbat and on Yom Tov, and all other seudot mitzvot, such, such as a brit milah, or a wedding. She'az ha-basar na'ase shutaf le-simcha shel ha-mitzvah umsaya be-kiyuma. Because the meat itself takes part, it is a partnership now in that simcha shel mitzvah, and helps it yeah, be, uh, keep it su- sustained. And that's why it's so important, you go to these um, you go to these functions and these smachot of weddings and brit milah and Shabbat, it's so important to have basar, to have meat, as to mesamech a person, but more than that, you're elevating its stature. Aval besudot reshut. However, stama seuda, like your Sunday barbecue um, in your backyard or birthday party bash. Amru uh, chachmei kabala. The rabbis, uh, the kabbalistic chachamim uh, said shelo tamid nasetikun. That doesn't necessarily rectify anything by you having meat during those times. Sheken im haadam eno minahek achar kakaraui. Because if a person is not behaving the way he's supposed to when he's having that meat at these birthday parties and barbecues, and therefore the, the meat you're having is not taking part, not having any partnership in its uh, elevation process. You will find many pious individuals who will choose not to eat meat uh, when it's not a seudat mitzvah, meaning when they, go, they, they, they won't go to a barbecue, or they'll go to a barbecue and they'll have salads, or they'll have uh, french fries, or something like that, but they won't partake in meat, because being that it's not a seudat mitzvah, they will not elevate uh, any of that meat to its level. Because again, they're worried that they're not going to elevate this meat the way it's uh, it's supposed to be. He does have an interesting note, and with this we'll conclude. Lefi muvan uh, it, this, because of this, the Gemara, we can understand the Gemara Maseche Pesachim that says Mitzad Musar, ethically speaking, Asur le'am ha'aretz rasha le'chol basar. The Gemara says that it's prohibited for an uh, uh, ignoramus, uh, evil, wicked person to eat meat. That's what Gemara says. Why is it so? Shehoiz ve'enbo Torah umidot tovot because since this wicked person has no Torah and he has no good deeds, ve'hu sonet hamidech hachamim ve'anshe ma'ala and he hates rabbinical scholars, or any people that are close to God, he has no part whatsoever in uplifting this uh, this meat to the level where it's uh, supposed to be. Why should we then, why should this person have an animal killed and slaughtered for him to eat when there is nothing spiritual happening to uh, to this meat? But when it comes to Shabbat, different. Even if you have an ignoramus, and he eats meat on Shabbat, he is fulfilling a mitzvah, because he's uplifting this meat, and rectifying uh, rectifying it, bringing it back to its original uh, original purpose. So what we see from here is very clear that everything that we do, especially when it comes to something so physical as eating, there's always a godly element, a spiritual element uh, towards it. And um, and m- most importantly, especially on Shabbat and Yom Tov. So if anything to walk out of here, this class, Bezat Hashem, is do whatever you can on Shabbat, Yom Tov, Brit Milah, weddings, to have meat, uh, to be mesameach, uh, the, the, the day brings you, brings you, you simcha, um, and, and it doesn't have to be a lot, a person does not like meat for whatever reason, uh, and, but, but he doesn't mind eating it, so just take a little bit, just have a, again, a little fork of, of some meat in order to fulfill this concept, because you are doing much more uh, than, uh, than just satiating yourself. You are taking the good of this meat and bringing it up to the original levels that it uh, it was meant to be. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us tonight. I'm uh, I'm happy you were here. I hope you enjoyed it. Bezat Hashem, we're not done this this chapter with regards to uh, vegetarianism. We have a few parts left, which are Bezat Hashem. We will uh, complete next uh, week. Wishing everyone a wonderful night. Be well.